Hello, my name is Julie Watts. I work at the University of Nottingham in the Nano Scale and Micro Scale Research Centre, and I'm going to be talking to you and doing a demo on uh, high pressure freezing. So, what is high pressure freezing? Well, high pressure freezing is a sample preparation technique whereby we use cold liquid nitrogen and simultaneously very high pressures in order to achieve extremely rapid freezing of samples. This promotes the formation of amorphous vitreous ice and you shouldn't get any ice crystals forming to a depth of a few hundred microns. So this maintains structural integrity of your samples and we do not need cryoprotectants. I've got a table here that compares different freezing methods so we can plunge into liquid nitrogen and that, that um, is a relatively slow cooling rate because it's a relatively um, small heat transfer coefficient for liquid nitrogen. You do get a, a vast improvement if you move to freezing your samples in liquid ethane. But high pressure freezing, you can see there's an order of magnitude um, improvement in the, the quality and the rate of um, freezing because you get such a rapid cooling rate. Before I go into the laboratory to do any work, I will have done, of course, a risk assessment um, to make sure that I'm working in an appropriate way and I have PPE and uh, protocols and oxygen depletion alarms in place. Liquid nitrogen is an asphyxiant, so please do take it very seriously. I will also have done a quick literature search so that I know um, what sort of wash solutions I may need or if there's any special sample preparation I may need to do and I will have spoken to the researcher and found out what their research question is and what technique that they're preparing their samples for. This is our Leica EM ICE high pressure freezer. It is a fully automated system. It's rather heavy, so the first thing you have to do is make sure that all four casters are actually locked because it can move during operation. Assuming that's the case, you merely turn it on at the back, press the touch screen, and the system achieves um, appropriate pressure. You then fill the nitrogen dewer th with liquid nitrogen that's going to be used to freeze the samples, and you do that by opening the door that you can see is open on the left, and I've put the um, the piping in, I'm dispensing liquid nitrogen into, into that dewer. Then we have a stereo microscope which you can use to um, examine your samples, make sure you've actually transferred your samples into the planchettes and that you've got the correct volume present. There's a touch screen which gives you information about the system. There's also a loading station. The surface of this loading station is dark, that's to enable you to see the samples properly and I am quite precious about keeping this so, so that I have a sign on it at all times and it's not in use to say do not leave things on this surface. Um, underneath that there's a door and inside there is where the samples are deposited into a sample storage dewer, again under liquid nitrogen and they will stay there until you want to transfer them. When the system's cooled down, we then add liquid nitrogen to the sample storage dewer, and this is where samples go when they've been frozen. Inside the dewer, there is a segmenting insert to divide the samples up, and a trisection pod to catch them at the bottom. And you can segment them into three groups of up to three samples. So this helps you um, to identify them, and if you're preparing them in batches, you can keep track of what you've done more easily. The trisection pod at the bottom is numbered and the numbers correspond with the top of the segmenting insert and you merely clip them together um, using the, the dial at the top. So once you've locked your trisection pod and segmenting insert together, insert them into the storage dewer, wait till it's finished boiling and then add a little bit more liquid nitrogen. Storage dewer fits into the instrument and a little flap that's underneath the loading station. So open the flap and then um, pull out the tray. The handle, a tool to enable you to do this, is kept at the front. It's a, an easy thing to lose, so I usually keep it, make sure it's at the, at the front of there where it's supposed to be. You uh, pick up the dewer thus. There are notches to align with the insert and the back of the loading station. Make sure they're all aligned. It's slightly awkward making space for the camera, but um, you get the gist. And then you put the handle back, close the door, close the flap, and the system will register that um, the dew has been introduced. 
So you select the sample carrier system that you need for the planchettes that you're using. There are different ones available depending on whether you're using 3mm or 6mm diameter planchettes and there is also a different system for freeze fracture planchettes which are 3mm in diameter. So once we've got those we select um, a top, a bottom and a centre plate for each of them and you check that they fit together snugly and that there are no burrs present on any of the outer edges. If there are burrs present then you could invoke an engineer's visit. Um, so it's a good idea to, to check they all fit together snugly first before you put them onto the loading station. So fit the bottom plate and then put a centre plate in place. It can go either way up or either way round. And then we attach the, um, the last part at the top as shown on the screen. The sample I'm using for this demonstration is homogenised plant material. It's a really nice bright green and it's also a liquid so I can pipette it so it's nice and easy to show as for a demonstration. I have got um, two planchettes and on top of a my clean microscope slide. I have scored the inside of the planchettes and I have marked the rever reverse side so that I can easily identify them afterwards and then I merely draw up some of my solution, uh, hold the planchettes um, so that they don't stick to the um, pipette and then I'm smearing the sample across the uh, planchette. And then I'm going to place another planchette on top and put both of those into the carrier system that I've already placed in position. I'll just give it a quick dab with a filter paper to make sure there's no liquid on the surface and then I remove everything from the sample preparation area. To freeze you just close the lid and the automated process starts and it freezes the sample. Freezing cycle performance is monitored by the instrument and you get a readout in the form of a graph which shows you um, the change in temperature and the change in pressure over time. These two should intersect at zero and the value dt over dt uh, should be greater than 15,000 and then you know that you've got um, good system performance. Once you've frozen all of your samples, remove a sample storage dewer and then you take out the insert and put that into your pre-cooled um, unloading station. And then you release the trisection pod. It fits into a metal part which is clamped to the bottom of the liquid nitrogen reservoir by use of magnets. And then you pre-cool your tools that you need. Thus, and then you remove all of the uh, plastic top and bottom parts, leaving the centre section, the centre plates, and the freeze fracture planchettes may be still inside those or they may have already been removed. There is a tool available, a nifty little gadget, to be able to remove the planchettes, and I'll show you those in a moment. Speed is of the essence, I have to say, when you're transferring samples, but you do have to wait for tweezers to cool down, otherwise you may warm your sample up when you handle it. So I'm just going to check that each of these plastic parts doesn't have a sample stuck to it, because I'm informed by other people that the minute you don't check is the minute that the samples stick. And you don't want to have spent all this, this time and effort um, preparing the samples to then have them warm up on the side. So I'm just going to remove all of those. Moving all of these large plastic parts does make it much easier to, to see the samples. I will also add that the first sample that I froze was actually ammonium formate or just distilled water in a 3mm planchette and I did that as a check to make sure the system is working correctly. The manufacturer does recommend you do this. So that means the maximum number of samples you can prepare in any one freezing session is actually 8 rather than 9. So I've nearly removed all of those out of the way now. And I hope you can just about see the label on, on the um, underside of, of that planchette. 
So next what I'm going to do is transfer that into the um, planchette removing tool. I try and keep it under liquid nitrogen as I'm transferring it across and everything's awkward because it's being filmed. So you insert that into there and then with the nifty gadget you just push the planchette out and it, it sits in a little um, storage well. It's quite easy to see because they've thoughtfully um, painted it a nice dark colour for you. Then what you do is you take your pre-labelled plastic pot or similar to store your planchettes in, keeping everything under liquid nitrogen and then I'm just going to pop the sample into that pot. When I've finished unloading all of them, I will then put that little plastic container inside a falcon tube. Neither of those plastic containers will be sealed because if you store things under liquid nitrogen and seal them, there's a chance that they may explode. Therefore, I've drilled holes in the falcon tube and for these little pots, I'm going to um, leave the lid off. There are additional units available for the high pressure freezer. There is a workflow available that enables you to image your cells using a light microscope and then extremely rapidly transfer those samples to the high pressure freezer, enabling um, subsequent correlative cryo light microscopy. That's just been developed. There's also electrical stimulation uh, or light stimulation units available. There's a biopsy gun enabling you to take either six or three millimeter tissue biopsies. The Leica website is full of useful information, application notes, publications. There's also some very good YouTube videos out there that describe the process and you can actually see what happens inside the instrument, which is quite cool.